you know, telling him he's got to do this or do that. Um, hopefully it's a mutual bond. Um, and, uh, you know, we both enjoy playing with one another. So, um, you know, he's everybody's got their own decisions to make. And, um, you know, uh, hopefully me showing my commitment, uh, being here and, and wanting to play with him long term, um, you know, sticks out. I owe him a trophy. I owe him a trophy. That's what I owe this organization. Um, it's, 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 this is uh, a, a window that we're trying to capture. And uh, my commitment and my job is to try to bring a title here. Paul George got paid in the Harris tight. You can see it. He signs a max extension to stay with the Clippers. According to Woj, the deal guarantees George will make as much as $226 million over the next five years. The Clippers are extending his deal for an additional four years at $190 million on top of the $35.4 million guaranteed for the 2020-2021 season. The deal also includes a new player option before the 2024-2025 season. Big Perk joins us, gracing your television screens. Always good to see you, sir. But Steve Stephen A, I'm starting with you on this one. Do you feel like PG-13 deserved that kind of money, deserved the max? I believe he did. I believe he did. Regardless of his troubles in the postseason, I believe he deserves it. Uh, the fact of the matter is when you've got a uh, uh, Russell Westbrook making $217 million, when you have John Wall over 170 and you see the kind of money that these guys are getting paid, I have no problem with Paul George getting this money. As a matter of fact, what I really, really want to applaud about him is the fact that he didn't duck and run. You hit the side of the damn backboard. You fold in the game seven. You don't get it done. Um, I don't want. I, I don't want you looking to go elsewhere and to skip town after this upcoming season because you could be a free agent. You right there in town in L.A. They're willing to give you the money. You're going to be a face of the franchise. You ain't ducking and running, and you acknowledged for the public to know you owe the organization a ring because last year, in my opinion, was your best chance to get it, and you blew it. So the fact that he's willing to embrace the challenge, accept the challenge, um, I like that. And in terms of the max extension, again, I've always been of the mindset it's not just what you do in the postseason. It's what you do over the course of 82 games. It's whether or not you show up and you're ready to roll. For the most part throughout his career, when you watch some of these numbers, Numbers. The year before, he averaged 28, and so I'm looking at it from that perspective, and I'm saying to myself, excuse me, the brother's got potential. We've called him a star. Why are we lamenting the things that he did in the postseason? Because we expected better from him, and he didn't give that to us. So he's got some making up to do to the Clippers organization um, and to those that had lofty expectations for him. But having said that, in terms of character as well, I don't think you can meet a better person. He's a real good dude. He's going to work hard. He's not going to cheat you with effort. His durability might be a question mark from time to time. But in the end, I think particularly in today's NBA co economy with the money that's flowing around today, you got an opportunity to keep Paul George over the next five years. You do it. Let me be very clear. The Clippers had to extend him. They had to extend him because they had to make the trade for him. Or else they get no Kawhi or, or Paul George. They had to do. Who wouldn't do that? And then once you have him, you can't let him walk out the door. Someone's going to give him the max contract. The Clippers had to do it. I get it. But did he deserve it? I take no pleasure in saying this, guys. The answer is no. He did not deserve it. Now, let me tell you something. For years, I would have heated debates when I would say Paul George is better than Carmelo Anthony. Because Carmelo was a better scorer, but Paul George was a very good scorer, and Paul George is a shutdown defender. Great defender, and Carmelo was. And I used to have debates with this. It's not like I'm not a Paul George guy. I, I, I really, really thought he was excellent for a number of years, um, maybe before the mainstream caught on to, the, to how good he was. But here's the problem, guys. That applies to the regular season. He, had, he was 28-8-6 on the year two years ago. On the season, he's capable of being a top five MVP player or in that conversation until it matters most. Guys, the reason you have to perform in the playoffs in the NBA, the only thing that matters is the playoffs. Don't talk to me about the regular season. Is this. They're going, they want to do play, play-in games now? Guys, already eight teams in each conference make the playoffs. It's over 50% of the teams, 15 teams in each conference. Already over 50% of the teams make the playoffs. You had a playing game, that's postseason. Once the season's over and you're still playing, that's postseason. So you mean to tell me 
10 out of 15 teams make the playoffs, basically. 10 out of 15. That's two-thirds of the league is in the playoffs. Don't even talk to me about the regular season. If you had studs on the roster, you will always be in the postseason. And then how do you play? Guys, Paul George is paid like a superstar. This is the most money we're allowed to give you, right? Because, of course, they make rules so they can underpay the players. But this is the most money we can contractually give you to be a superstar. And then when it doesn't matter, you're almost a superstar. And when it matters most, you're a an kind of average, maybe a tick above average starter. No, guys. The reason the Clippers, like, really, you look at them, you go, they have a shot against the Lakers. They're going to win a championship. I mean, whatever Kawhi did in Game 7, we know what Kawhi can do. We know Paul George is going to go away. At least that's what he's done so far. It doesn't mean he'll always do it. I'm rooting for him. He's, by the way, a very nice guy. I dealt with Paul George when I was out in L.A. before around the All-Star Games. A very nice guy. Easy to root for. That's different than saying he deserved that contract. If you get paid like a superstar, you got to be a superstar when it matters most. Well, Stephen A. Max, y'all know I, I was a former player, and I'm all in for former for guys that's playing to get their bread, to get their lettuce. Because although basketball is entertainment to the outside world, I know that this is a job. And even when I was a vet, I encouraged guys to get their bread. Now, did he deserve the max contract in my eyes? Hell no. But I'm not taking away from what him and his agent done, and that was capitalized on the moment because they had all the leverage. Think about it. The Clippers gave up, you know, all these first-round picks and everything that they had basically to acquire Paul George, to get him to the Clippers. And here it is. You got Paul George and Kawhi Leonard on the back end where they have a player option uh, for next year to opt out. And so you can't risk losing Paul George. I get that. But here's the thing. Where's the ownership on the front office? Lawrence Frank, the front office of the organization, and I'm going to ask you this because I'm trying to figure out what are the goals, what are the standards for the Clippers organization? Because you look at the performance that Paul George had in the bubble, and it was horrible. And they lost a, a, a seven-game series to the Denver Nuggets, and a lot of it went on Paul George because of his performance. Kawhi had a sorry, uh, uh, unexcusable game seven, and I get that. But for majority of the playoffs, he was phenomenal. Paul George didn't step up in that Robin role. And so when you're looking at the Clippers organization, that standard should be high. It should be super high. Not, at the very minimum, you make the conference finals. And this is a league that is a what have, you, what have you done for me lately type league. And if you go back and reflect, Paul George didn't do nothing. So I, I'm not knocking him for taking a deal, but I am putting a lot of ownership on the front office of what are your goals, what are your standards, and just handing out cash. Well, let me say this. Let me say this, and I think it's important. I get where you're coming from, uh, uh, KP. And again, even though I, I disagree with both, I disagree with both of y'all. It's in a respectful position because I understand that y'all are making valid points. I'm not refuting that, but I just want to throw out just for this season alone, and we're not talking about the contract because we understand the contract extension and what that's going to lead to about 226 million. But let's just go down the list of the top salaries in the NBA this year. We got no problem with Steph Curry, number one, at 43 million. Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul, John Wall, James Harden. So they top 10. Blake Griffin is on this list too. At number eight, at $36.8 million. When you look at some people directly below Paul George, who's at number nine at $35 million, we got Mike Conley at 34. We got Jimmy Butler at 34, Kawhi Leonard, of course, Kimball Walker's there, Tobias Harris is there, Chris Middleton is there. All I'm trying to say to you is that when we look at it, if Even you're a. telling me, okay, Paul Judge George doesn't deserve this because he came up small in a big spot. And by the way, his numbers in the postseason ain't what they are in the regular season. All I'm going to counter with y'all is that there's a lot of names on the list that we're fans of that we can say the same thing about. So when you look at it from that perspective, right. in terms of cats getting paid, we're not. none of us are faulting them for taking the money and getting paid. I'm just simply saying you have to take into account the position that the Clippers are in, 
what the what market demands. And the guy that you got that we are willing to admit is a star. He ain't a superstar. He certainly didn't show that in Game 7. But we can't sit there and talk about Paul George like he's some scrub that don't deserve some paper. No, well, first of all, I'm happy that he got his money, of course. And Paul George in the playoffs is not a star. Paul George in the playoffs, considering his defense, is a tick above average starter. In the regular season, he's, he's an all-star plus. In the playoffs, he's a tick above average starter. That does not hey, Max, deserve a max deal. When In game the, seven, when he came up small, but game six, he had 33. In game five, he had 26. I, Just so y'all know. He can do that. By the way, starters can do that once in a while. But look at his overall performance. Okay. You wouldn't say that's an all-star but oh, in the playoffs. Okay, but let me say this. What you're pointing out, Stephen A., this one gets this much, Conley gets this much, et cetera. You're pointing out market inefficiencies. If the market was totally efficient, LeBron would get the most, and then AD or Kawhi or the Freak or someone like that, and then Harden, like, or, and then Steph would be up there. In a, in a perfectly efficient.